Hey everyone, I'm James Erickson. And I'm Andre Erickson, and welcome back to... So, because James and I haven't really given our opinions and thoughts on the Switch content that has come out and is coming out, today we thought we'd discuss our thoughts and opinions on some of the Switch content that is coming out and is already out. So we're gonna yes. do that. Some of the some of the first games I wanted to discuss was some that we've played already. Um, and I'll just name three right off the bat. That was uh, Sniper Clips, Bomberman, and 1-2-Switch. We actually played all three of those. I'm looking at my Switch right here. Hi! Hi! Anyways, <laughs> these three games we played on stream together, I think when they first came out. First game we'll talk about is, is Snipper Clips. We have, we've played several yeah. levels on that together on our stream. What did, what did you think about that game? What was, I think it was, oh my gosh, I'm gonna forget. I don't remember <laughs> how much it cost. Um, but what did you think about that game? I mean, for what it was, it was fun. I had a lot of fun with it. It was really funny. We had some laughs. If you were there on the stream, we had a good time. At least I did. Um, yeah, it was. I thought it was very uh, creative. And the faces <laughs> they made were really funny. <laughs> Totally, yes. Yeah. It was. A, it's a fun game to play casually, obviously. Yeah. And uh, they had cool little puzzles. Um, and then after that time that we streamed it, Lori and I continued to play some more of it. And there were uh, different puzzles than what we played with. And yeah. it was fun. I mean, it was a fun little casual game that you could play with a friend or a group of friends. Or, or an enemy. You could even play by yourself. I haven't played by myself, but apparently you can do that. Next game we'll talk about is Bomberman. And uh, we played Bomberman a little bit on stream. We played the multiplayer with a couple of yeah. you guys who were watching. Um, and I think with my experience, um, it seemed it seems like it was more fun playing with a group of people. We yeah, had, I, I think, up to five people playing at one time. I think you can go up to eight. Um, and we had a good time. Like it was casual, like just, it was just like it was a fun type of game i guess <laughs> it, a fun type of game it wasn't something i would play over and over and over no. again um it, like what did, what did you think about the experience yeah i agree i agree i mean there wasn't too much to it like it was it got a little repetitive after a while but it's fun while it lasted i mean it's fun to play with people like you said but i mean eventually it's like eh. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and I played the single player a little bit, and I got to I got to the boss of the first world, and like getting up to that point was okay. It was just it was kind of like classic Bomberman from what I remember playing. Bomberman wasn't something that I would play over and over again. I think like I said before with the multiplayer, I haven't played it since, and I don't know if I'll really play it again. Honestly. <laughs> well, that's good. Another game I'll talk about, Andres hasn't played this game. I heard about Snake Pass, I think the day it came out, and it was interesting because it came out on the same day that it came out, I think it did, at least. It came out on the same day that it came out on the Xbox One and the PS4, and I thought it was interesting that it also came out on the Switch, um, and I didn't know anything uh, about it. I saw and so when I looked, Yeah, when I looked at gameplay and pictures, I was expecting it to be like a 2D... Another yeah, 2D platformer coming to the thinking. Switch because they don't have any other major games out. Um, but then I saw that it was like a 3D, like, snake simulator, like a puzzle-type game. <laughs> and I was very interested, so I started playing it. Um, and it really is like a snake simulator. <laughs> it's not... It's nothing like... Or what's it's not like point? anything I've played before, I would say. What did you say? I said, what's the point of the game? Um, so you have to slither around like a snake and move like a snake and you have to try to <laughs> overcome small obstacles to gain uh, There's smaller collectibles and then there's like coins that are really hard to find sometimes yeah. um, But the major point of the game is there's three collectibles um, They're called keystones that you have to find throughout the map that open a gate to the next map and uh, it's it is pretty challenging it can get frustrating, but um, It's fun some people will say that it's a nice game to relax to, and other people will very much disagree with that. It can get frustrating. Um, I agree with both sides of that. <laughs> it can be relaxing at times, and then there's some parts that are really frustrating. Um, and it's not a perfect game. Sometimes the camera is a little weird, and 
sometimes the snake also moves a little too slow for me, but at the same time, moves. it is fun learning how to move the way the snake does, uh, learning how to control it. And the music is really good. I love the music um, from Snake Pass. Um, so that's all I have to say for that Snake Pass. We'll move on to <laughs> one, two, Switch. Yay. The game that should have came with the Switch. Uh, the but game it was that shouldn't $50. exist. <laughs> it was the worst fifty dollars. I'm sorry for those of you guys who enjoy it. I know that in giant groups of people, it can be fun, yeah. um, but it wasn't worth fifty dollars. I think the only way you can have fun with that game <laughs> is if you're just kind of in a whatever mood, and you're with your friends, or you're at a party, and you're just like, "Hey, want to play this stupid game?" Yeah, <laughs> and you can laugh with it and have fun with it. But other than that, I just when I played it, I literally was just like. Just the fact that you paid fifty dollars for it is like <laughs> mind-boggling and just so frustrating. The reasons why I didn't like One Two Switch was because some of the games were really basic and they were over exaggerating them. They over exaggerate to the point where you think you have to do more than you really actually have to. There are a couple a couple of the games were fun for the time being. Like, Quick Shot was fun. Like, you know, you gotta pick up your gun and draw. Uh, there's only so much you can do with that game. And then, but some games like the big... <laughs> some of the games we didn't even play um, because we saw how to play them and we thought, what was the point? Uh, one of the games <laughs> was the bottle shaking one. Did you, do you remember that? No. When they, when they take the Joy-Con and they hold it like this and they shake the bottle and they're they're listening and then <laughs> I for some reason I don't know why and then they would give it over to the other player and then they would shake it and then they would give it over to the other player and then they would shake it and all of a sudden it would pop and who well, won I don't, I, I don't know who won <laughs> I don't know what the point of the game was um, and then oh, you might so remember stupid. the baby game it was I didn't play that one it was, I didn't play it either. I, and I, I just remember watching how to play it. It was the baby, you had the whole switch and the baby was here and you had to rock it to sleep. And then you put it down and then it wakes up again. And then I guess you rock it back to sleep? And that's the game? There was only one person in the how-to video, so I wasn't exactly sure what the point. I mean, I have two small children, so I don't have to play that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got a 6.8 on IGN. I'm surprised it's even that high. I want to see what they said. It's the consensus is a successful demonstration of unique hardware, but a shallow, gimmicky game. Sure, these are fun little tiny games that you can play with like a big party and it's goofy, I guess, and there really isn't a point to <laughs> half the games, but um, the frustrating part for me is the $50 price tag on it. It's, it's not worth $50. It should have come with the Switch. I don't, honestly, for, this is my opinion. I know that people, some people out there really like this game, um, but I don't even know if I would spend $5 on it. I know I spent the $50 on it. I, I bought it for, you know, partially for YouTube so we could play it. Mm. so that we could experience what the Switch has to offer. Um, but if I had to go back and know what that game was all about, um, I don't know if I would even spend $5 on it. It says, <laughs> IGN, it says, ba Baby is one of the most off-putting minigames I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> it's really Did they funny. say why? That's the one I was explaining before, rocking the baby. Yeah. And it does seem to genuinely be the audio of a baby crying, which automatically makes it one of the most off-putting minigames I think I've ever played. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. And what's the point? How do you, do you win? Like, you win when the baby's asleep, but then it wakes know. up again. It says, like, are Zen, we children? Zen has you sit perfectly still or hold a particular pose or just put the, the Joy-Con down. The Switch largely yeah, can't tell the difference. Exactly. <laughs> and, like... So stupid. We were, playing, we were playing the game where you... I was playing with Brandon the other day at Easter. And we were playing the game where you put the, you put the Joy-Con on the table and you wait for the ring and then you pick it up and say hello. And whoever says hello first wins. But the f the very first time we tried it, it rung. I picked it up first and said hello, but Brandon accidentally banged it on the on the table right when he touched it. He <laughs> won. He didn't even say hello. He didn't even pick it up. 
it, but he won! <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> and I felt like that was a really good example of how some of those games on 1-2-Switch work. Like, like you just said with, um, what was the game you just said? Zen. Zen. Like, it makes it, it makes you feel like you need to do more to win, but with, like, Zen, you know, you have to stand very still, but all you really need to do is just put the Joy-Con on a table and you win. The games I did find very interesting. <laughs> the quick shot was fun. Uh, the ball count was a was a cool game. It wasn't that fun, but it was a cool game to experience because you get to experience the HD rumble and the Joy-Con, and it yeah. does feel like there are little tiny you know balls inside the Joy-Con. Um, I thought that was cool. That's really only one that had an impression on me. The other, the other ones were either stupid or not fun to play. So <laughs> yeah, but just remember that's my opinion, and Andres has his opinion, and you guys have your own opinion. Um, you you get you guys can get angry us you're angry at us in the comments and uh, I won't bat an eye I guess. Tips, I have a feeling most of you will agree. <laughs> Maybe, probably Maybe. not. <laughs> we'll see. We've also seen that Minecraft is coming to the Switch, coming back to a Nintendo or console or uh, yeah, they're just they're just bringing Minecraft to the Switch. Um, it's gonna be like 13 times bigger the world I guess than uh, the previous title for or the previous minecraft for the switch xbox and ps3 i guess or i guess it's on the ps4 and xbox one too you've played it on the xbox 360 you haven't played yes. it a lot um since you used to play it. You, you used to play it a lot right yeah i did yeah after you played it i played it for a bit on the 360 and I actually at that point was the first time i really played it it was probably a year and a half ago yeah and then i bought it on the wii u and i had a lot of fun with it um would you buy it again for the Switch? Like, would you? Are you still interested in Minecraft enough to buy it for the Switch so you could play it on handheld mode or just on console mode? I probably would because I don't play Xbox anymore, so and I don't have yeah. it on the Wii, so yes, so my, I would. Minecraft still interests you enough to play it again? Yeah, I mean, I think mostly for me, I just like building stuff. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's true. very therapeutic. <laughs> I don't know if I would buy it for the Switch because la last year I just bought it for the Wii U. Yeah. So, well, I get and I, I, I want to play it on handheld, and it's going to be a bigger world, so I don't know. I'm torn. If I have a good mm. amount of money by the time... Wait, did you say it's going to be 13 times bigger? Apparently. Apparently what? the world is going to be 13 times bigger than the Wii U version. Oh my gosh, that's huge, I feel like. Yeah. I didn't even realize what you said. I was just like, <laughs> completely fa like didn't phase me. <laughs> The last thing we're gonna mention is was very exciting, at least to me. Uh, Salmon Run. What did you think about? What were your first impressions of Salmon Run? We'll probably talk about this more in the future, but uh, just real quick, first impressions and thoughts. Well, I also am very excited. I really wanted new modes in Splatoon 2, and it looks like we're getting one. And it reminds me of like zombies in Call of yeah. Duty, and I really like zombies, so <laughs> I really. I think many people around the world enjoyed like Nazi zombies for Call of Duty. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen or played something that lived up to the experience of Call of Duty zombies. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if if Splatoon uh, Salmon Run will, but it's really cool to have a four-player co-op horde type game where you need yeah. to work together to kill all the zombies and there's different waves. Mm -hmm. uh, I said zombies. <laughs> Salmon. <laughs> something that i thought was really cool that they added was reviving each other it's like something oh, you don't yeah, really think of in splatoon because you yeah. can't do it in the actual 4v4 game right so when they get splatted they put down that lifesaver thing oh yeah <laughs> and they have the little so uh, creative jumping around but yeah that was cool it, it seems like it'll be a fun experience will there be yeah. more, more maps we'll see i don't know i'm sure there will be but i don't know Okay, now moving on to reading viewer comments. And yes. last week we had our Q&A, and then we asked you guys a very important, very serious question, <laughs> which was, if Bessie had 17 acorns, how come her dad didn't tell her what was under the rug plus 11? And your answers were as follows. <laughs> so dumb. Matthew the Gamer 976 says, because Bessie would have stole the carpet and the rest of the acorns because she's a savage. That makes sense. I would say I have to agree. <laughs> but you didn't take into account plus 11, so that makes it... Yep. The Sloan Ranger says, Because Bessie 
is a whore. <laughs> Plus 11. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> you hit it right on the nose, Sloan. Jacob John says because Bessie dot 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 was a man. Secretly um, named Boxy. <laughs> that is profound, friend. Yeah. I'm surprised you guys found all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough one. So the question for this week, which you can answer down in the comments, but we will answer next time. And it's going to be this. From now on, we're going to try to do questions that are based on what we'll be talking about next so that they'll still relate. And so based on what we're going to be doing next time, the question for you guys now is... What are some of your favorite music tracks from a video game? And tell yeah. us a little about it. Which, that was a badly worded question, but... <laughs> for example, um... Well, actually, for example, like I talked about uh, today, um, Snake Pass had really good music, and, um, I think if I had to look back on a couple games that had really good music a snake pass would be kind of up there like it really i don't know but really <laughs> uh, it, it was really good apparently it was the same people that make donkey kong music i guess maybe for donkey ah, kong country but i'm not entirely yeah. sure um but yeah just think of think of a game that had really good music that you really just music that you really loved and appreciated and when yeah. you hear that music you think of the fun times you've had maybe from uh, a specific maybe from a specific level too yeah oh yeah <laughs> That too. That's what so I. So yeah. But yeah. Um, answer those que answer that question or those questions in the comments <laughs> of this video, and we'll read them in the next one. And now the play of the week. If you'd like to have your play of the week shown, just send your plays over to ericksongamingthings at gmail.com or you can send us a link in our Discord channel in the play of the week server. Is that right? Yes. You and we'll leave that. the link to our Discord in the description below. And you can send us plays from whatever game, preferably games we play here in our channel or talk about, but it can be anything as long as it's interesting in some way. Yes. So yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed watching this Ericsson Exchange experience, then I guess, as they say in all those cliche <laughs> YouTube videos, slap that like button, That's I guess. That's what they say. <laughs> Explode that, punch that like button, and subscribe to Ericsson Gaming. If you haven't subscribed already, we do this stuff every Monday, trying to at least. <laughs> and then we got uh, contests and discussions. Um, the the deadline for the Mario Kart item contest no, this... up by the time this video is yes. out. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we'll be we're we're reading those comments and we've got an undertaking. So yes. Anyways, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. That's it. You have a good time with whatever the crap you're doing right now.